Yeah. All right, and we're up here. This is Clark Freeman Sullivan out here at 16th and Mission Street for the Free Bradley Manning protest sponsored by the Rocky Veterans Against the War San Francisco chapter. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day out here today. Uh, looks like we have a nice crowd of about 50 people. So uh, if you're not able to make it down here to the Mission District at 16th Street, um, feel free to lie back and watch a, watch the live stream that I'm providing to you. Uh, if uh, you're not familiar with the story of Bradley Manning, he is the Army Corporal who was arrested for releasing the WikiLeaks documents. Um, if you don't know who, what WikiLeaks is, uh, WikiLeaks was a website founded uh, by Julian Assange, um, who is, uh, was dedicated to releasing state secrets about the dirty dealings that our government, the United States government, is involved with around the world. Um, and for those of you that believe that America is a symbol of freedom in the world, it isn't. The uh, United States is involved around the world of maintaining corporate and Wall Street hegemony over us poor serfs. That's probably you and I, the 99%. So uh, that's why we're out here. Um, if you would like to support a Bradley Manning, we ask that you contact President Obama and contact your congressman. Uh, they probably will ignore it, but still your voice is heard, and please make your voice be heard by supporting Bradley Manning. Currently he is in custody in uh, at Quantico, Virginia, in a military prison. Uh, he's being held under the severest of conditions, uh, which best could be described as torture. Uh, for the first uh, 75 to 100 days of his incarceration, he was not allowed to wear clothing. He was made to sit at the corner edge of his bunk with his back straight up, and he had to rigidly maintain this for hours and hours, and uh, quite frankly, it constitutes torture. So, uh, if you have, if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to comment or chat with me, either log on to Twitter or Facebook or UStream, and uh, log on, and then you'll be able to participate in the social stream. And very much, I would like for you to uh, to chat with me. To let me know if you can see the video. But, the video and the audio and and whatnot and just ask me questions and or if you have anything you'd like to say to anybody that's here uh, participating and I'll do the, my best to satisfy your request so uh, anyway I'm gonna move up a little closer here and the speakers are starting. Obama is giving a speech at the Democratic Convention Boo. and we're here to say free Bradley Manning whistleblowing is not a crime and in fact Things like drone attacks are crimes. Bradley Manning is not who should be in prison. He didn't commit war crimes. He helped expose them if that's what he did, and if that's what he did, he's a hero. It's going to be a rally, speaker. We're going to be moving around some tonight. I'm going to read you something new while we wait. If you're caught in addiction, you can fight it. A lot of people have an addiction to voting for the lesser of two evils. So we got a 12-step program to help you break that addiction. Number one, admit you are in a self-destructive relationship with the Democratic Party. Number two, remove the conflicting bumper stickers from your collection. Bumper stickers that say shut down Guantanamo and Obama 2012 are mutually exclusive. Understand, kill this and more unjust war is the wrong kind of change to believe in. Number four, stop lying to yourself. The president is not sucking up to the most powerful interests in the world because he loves you. Number five, cut off all contact with Obama, Holder, Clinton, and Pelosi. No more phone calls, no more letters. They are aware of what they're doing, and they just don't care what you think. Number six, realize Obama is standing up and fighting. Unfortunately, he's fighting Afghans, Pakistanis, Yemenis, and Somalis in your name. I forgot my tripod to Number do it, so eight, sorry, it'll be a little shakier than you Get over your romantic feelings for the Democrats. 
Oh, he's from Homeland Security. Hold on, hold on. I think we're having snow in theater. Hold on, hold on. 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 Hold on, hold Bradley Manning has courage, he has stamina, and those are things that we all need. And in this period of the election, when too many people are telling you, just think about Americans. If you want good lives for Americans, vote for Obama. We say, look at the Republicans, look at the Democrats, look at what you did in the last four years. Think about humanity. The Republican convention was really white, and the Democrats are very multicolored. But in neither convention have you seen anything about care for the interests of humanity. Now the Democrats call for your vote and your money and your support. They are drone bombing Afghanistan, Pakistan. More U.S. soldiers have died, are dying of suicide been in combat because of what the American troops are being trained and ordered to do. Their humanity is being destroyed also. So come to the rally, we badly manning. We protested two weeks ago at the Obama headquarters. Iraq and Afghanistan vets, Afghans for Peace, the Bradley Manning Support Network, Many other organizations were coming together here today. We'll be having a rally and an action. Please join us. You gonna have a song? This song is as true today as it was in the 60s. Now you're masters of war. You that kill all the guns. You that kill the dead brains. You that build the big bombs. You that hide behind walls. You that hide behind death. I just want you to know I can see through your mask. You that never done nothing but build to destroy. You play with my world like it was your little toy. You put a gun in my hand. You hide from my eyes Then you turn and run farther When the battle is quiet Like Judas of old You lie and deceive A world war can be won You want me to believe But I see through your eyes I see through your brain Like I see through the water that runs down my drain You fasten their triggers For those who fire When you sit back and watch As the death count gets higher you hide in your mansions as young people fly. Flows out of their bodies and it's buried in the mud. How much do I know? To talk out of turn, you might say that I'm young. You might say I'm unlearned There's one thing I know 
John Younger Daniel Even Jesus would never forgive what to do Let me ask you one question Is your money that good? Will it buy you forgiveness? Do you think that it could? I think you will find When your death takes its toll All the money you made will never buy back your soul And I hope that you die And your death will come soon and I'll follow your casket on a pale afternoon. And I'll watch while your road down to your deathbed. And I'll stand on your grave till I know that you're dead. All right, we're gonna have a World War II veteran speech. Hello, friends, uh, brothers and sisters. My name is Harry Siegelman. I'm in the East Bay chapter of the Veterans for Peace. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran of World War II. There's not many of us left, but we can still take positions. I've been an anti-war movement ever since. And I thought one of the big heroes of the Vietnam War was Daniel Ellsberg when he published the Pentagon Papers and his foes are coming out and behind that war. Bradley Manning is doing the same thing here as is uh, Julian Assange. So I'm here to help free Bradley Manning and I hope you all all join us but study war no more. Free Bradley Manning. Yeah. Great. Now the crowd around here seems to be growing a little bit larger, minute by minute. And we have Joshua Shepard from Iraq Veterans Against the War. Hi there. I'm a uh, six-year Navy veteran. I got out in 2008. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of us veterans who are out fighting the hard fight um, against war and militarism and the, the war against truth that President Obama is waging, uh, can really relate to Bradley Manning. Um, it's a process to turn around once you've joined the military and committed so much of yourself to this institution. Um, just for instance, myself, I was a computer technician on some advanced uh, missile systems and I was, I was proud of that and I was pretty boastful about it. And, uh, and then my ship pulled in to Nagasaki, Japan with a full complement of Tomahawk missiles, SM-2 missiles, and SM-3 missiles. And I saw the shore packed with protesters and they were terribly angry at the fact that we were there. And I was dumbfounded and really naive. And at, at that point I really, I questioned, you know, I, I went from being a missile technician to, oh, I'm a missile technician. Um, and shortly after, it was when I, I came to a personal realization that I, I couldn't have any part in launching a missile. Um, then I, I actually almost lost my security clearance for reading literature against the wars. Um, and so, you know, I, my experience is just a small snippet of what Bradley Manning has been facing. He's been tortured for over two years now and uh, languishing in a prison with no one in sight and facing some really dire consequences if uh, we don't continue the fight, keep speaking up for Bradley Manning. He's exposed so much truth to the world about the realities of our foreign policy and the truth is hard. You know, we've got this country that's built upon a lot of lies 
and those lies are coming coming to the forefront and uh, people are realizing that what we suspected all along is really true and so I just I'd like your support um, as a veteran for Bradley Manning I'd like your support as a citizen it's our duty to make sure our government is uh, is abiding by our values and not their foreign policy and profit interests thank you all right Great. Uh, next, we're going to have um, Jeff Patterson. He's a project director of the Bradley Manning Support Network, and he's going to give you an update on uh, what's going on with Bradley. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, project director, Courage to Resist. Um, we got an awesome local Bay Area organizer, Michael uh, Thurman here. Air Force, recent Air Force veteran, uh, pulling us together here. Thanks for your work, Michael. What have we accomplished for Bradley Manning? We've given Bradley Manning a top-notch legal civilian attorney and a team of support personnel to do everything he can to fight for Bradley within the within the limitations of the military and justice system. And that's and we've spent a, a quarter of a million dollars to do that. Us, just grassroots, motley crew on the corner of 16th and Mission, with the help of 15,000 people around the world, have paid a quarter of a million dollars to get Bradley a fighting chance inside the court mark. So that's freaking impressive. And outside, on the streets of San Francisco and hundreds of other towns and cities around the world, we stepped forward and protested and did civil disobedience at the White House at Quantico. And we ended Bradley's torture at the hands of the Marine Corps at the Quantico base. So we stopped the torture and we've given him a fighting chance inside the court martial. Now, of course, it's the hard time. Uh, the hard part is to free Bradley Manning, and we have a fighting chance of doing that as well. Although we are the underdogs, the U.S. military complete the broke its own regulations when they tortured Bradley for almost a year at Quantico, violated Article 13 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The Commander-in-Chief, President Barack Obama, declared Bradley Manning guilty a year ago, a year plus before he's even gone to trial, a violation of the prohibition against unlawful command influence within the, within the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Bradley had a guarantee of a speedy trial, a speedy trial which has been interpreted as 180 days. And yet now we know that we're planning on the court-martial finally beginning in February 2013. That's probably going to happen in February 2013. And by that day, Bradley will have been in prison, in prison waiting trial for nearly 1,000 days. 1,000 days. Speedy trial is supposed to be 180 days. So now in November, two, uh, November 27th, we're going to have a hearing where all these people are going to have to take the stand to explain why they violated Bradley's constitutional rights to not be tortured. And the military judge will, re will have to decide whether that's enough a reason to throw out the case. Legally, it is, of course, it was a conspiracy by the highest ranking members of the military, a three-star general of the Pentagon who ordered Bradley tortured, a conspiracy to torture him. That is why the judge has the ability to throw out cases like this, to undo a grave injustice. But we don't know if that's going to happen. I think if we, only if we take to the streets and give her and make the political climate to give her the courage to do the right thing. Do we even have a chance? Otherwise, we're going to have to try to settle for giving Bradley 10 days credit for every day he was tortured. That would amount to seven years. So if Bradley is sentenced and convicted, if he's sentenced to 10 years, that means he would be getting out of jail within a few hundred days. But if Bradley ascends to 150 years or 100 years, that seven years ain't going to mean nothing. So again, we have to create the climate to let the military know that this is not somebody who 
in any way harmed the United States. No person was harmed from the information released, and yet great things have come of this. He's a whistleblower in every classic sense of the word, while the Marines who killed 24 civilians in Haditha, who admitted to killing these people in revenge and cold blood, are now released from military custody. They're free to carry on their lives. Bradley Manning, a whistleblower who uncovered such massacres, still facing life in prison after nine, nearly 900 days of incarceration. These are the injustices that we're facing today. President Barack Obama today can end this by pardoning Bradley Manning. President Barack Obama has the ability to pardon Bradley Manning before his trial. It's going to take a lot more work from us, the grassroots, to make that happen, to make that political reality. But that's part of the context, that's why we're fighting inside the courtroom, through our defense efforts, and outside on the streets today in San Francisco. It's free Bradley Manning. Awesome, thank you, Jeff. Next we're gonna have Nancy from Code Peak say a few words. All right, everyone, let's bring up our energy. Let's go with the chance. Ain't no power like the power of people. The power of people don't stop. So there ain't no power like the power of people. The power of people don't stop. So there ain't no power like the power of the people. The power of people don't stop. So there. I can't hear you. Ain't no power like the power of the people. The power of the people don't stop. Our message to the DNC world. We need to be a little bit louder here. So the power of the people, as we've seen in the Obama campaign office in Oakland, just packed up and moved. Someplace else. Who knows? I, I don't know. Does anyone know where they moved? Someplace downtown? I don't know by tomorrow. City Hall. Okay. It was the power of the people and the power and tenacity of the activists in Oakland, in the East Bay, and in San Francisco who took their message directly and got the message. And my own and Claire, we don't agree with the president's harmful policies. We don't agree with the continued funding of wars abroad. We don't agree with the NDAA. We don't agree with the reckless drone strikes in Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia and who knows where else. With countries that we aren't even at war with. The Nobel Peace Prize President who oversees a kill list. The Nobel Peace Prize President who has a kill list with five tests to see if that terror suspect should be killed. We need to continue our message loud and clear to the president and his supporters today and tomorrow and the next day up until November election day know that we are so serious. And we are at a time, really tough times, where people are living paycheck to paycheck, high unemployment, foreclosure crisis, student debt, wars raging, environmental injustice. Veterans aren't getting the services that they need. It's up to us, the power of the people, to change and hold our government accountable and hold crooks on Wall Street accountable. So when Obama hits the stage tonight, do we expect him to talk about universal health care? No. Do we expect him to call a moratorium on foreclosures? No. Do we expect him to call to an MN to fucking? and money has removal and end their addiction to oil? No. Do we expect him to call for free Bradley Manning? No. Do we expect him to tell the truth? No. No. We know the truth. We know the truth from WikiLeaks. And we know the truth about Bradley Manning. Even though for us he spent about seven to eight hours in jail, in the cold Oakland jail, freezing, being released at 4 o'clock after shutting down the Obama headquarters, it's nothing compared to what Bradley Manning has gone through. It's important that we are out here. It's important that we take our message directly to the DNC and tell them that we want a free Bradley Manning and we want a better world. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nancy. Yeah, my, my name is Michael uh, Thurman. I was one of the veterans arrested. Uh, on the 16th in Oakland at the Obama campaign office. We occupied it for a period of time. Along with, uh, 
along with um, some people in Portland, too, who occupied the office up there. Five people up there got arrested and five people down here got arrested. And that same day, there's actions happening in L.A. and Seattle and Tacoma, up and down the West Coast. And uh, right now, we could say that this action coincides with 35 cities nationwide. Yeah. Yeah. This is a coordinated action in, in cities all the way from Anchorage, Alaska to Tallahassee, Florida. So we have, uh, we have messages of, of support for Valley overwhelming uh, every city every city today while uh, the president gets ready to make his acceptance speech in Charlotte, North Carolina. So um, next we're going to have Stephanie from World Can't Wait speak. And here's Stephanie. I didn't get to listen to Obama's speech today, but I want to tell you about something that many people are asking us about Obama. People are saying that they watch the Republican convention and they're scared shitless because if Obama doesn't win, then Romney will win and then these fascist lunatics will be running things for four years. And on that basis, they're telling us, maybe you should calm down and be quiet right now. Let Obama win and then we can pressure him. I say people have an addiction in this country to the voting for the lesser of two evils. And I say the lesser of two evils is meaningless to the people of Pakistan and Afghanistan because they're on the other end of a drone strike. And I say there is no lesser of two evils when it comes to the global war on terror. Obama renamed it. The Republicans want to put the old name back on it. But it will all mean the same thing. We are going to have a President of the United States, one or the other. It doesn't really matter what you think or I think. It doesn't matter what the people think. The needs of the empire are for a powerful commander-in-chief. There are two candidates running. One of them will become the commander-in-chief over an empire that will continue to commit war crimes and crimes against humanity. We live in this country. We can do what nobody else in the world can do. We can stand up and say, not in our name. These crimes are crimes which must be accountable, not just a long time down the road in history, but now. And between today and the election, we all have a responsibility. We can go out and say, no, American lives are not more important than the lives of other people. We do not accept any excuses for drone attacks. In fact, drone attacks as a war crime maybe mean the commander-in-chief belongs behind bars, not a hero like Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning is very young. If he did what he is accused of, he is a hero to the world. If Bradley Manning actually gave those troops to the world, then we in the world can do something with them and change everything. We haven't done it yet, but it's only because there have not yet been enough of us. Speaking truth, walking, talking, acting, refusing, resisting, there need to be more of us. So promise yourself, promise all of us here today that between now and the election, every time you hear somebody say, but we have to choose the lesser of two evils. You will take one of these posters, the 12 step road to recovery against that addiction, and you will read them the 12 steps that any person suffering addiction can take. They can take it by themselves, but they need support, and you are going to be there to support them. Other people are going to be talking a lot more about what we can do to free Bradley Manning and what we're going to do today. I just want to thank everyone here for acting and standing up on your conscience and ask you to remember with me that we need to do this day in, day out. We are doing it today in 35 cities. The next time this happens, it needs to be double, triple, quadruple that. And our voices need to be heard. Ours are the voices that will lift the hearts of the world. 
Ours are the voices that will say, not everyone in this country is a war criminal or complicit with war crimes or accepting of war crimes. And frankly, and this is just me speaking, not the organizers of this demonstration necessarily, I just want to say, if anybody can look at what Obama has done in the last four years and call for four more years of this, then you are at peace with great crimes. And you need to learn to live with that and face it until you get the strength to change it. Thank you very much for watching that vote. Thank you all for being here today. As Michael mentioned, we have actions happening so people can ask Obama to free Bradley Manning in 35 cities around the country. These range from Hawaii to Alaska to Birmingham, Alabama, Dallas, Texas, Washington, D.C. Literally all over the United States today, people are coming together to say that they support truth, democracy, an end to unnecessary classification, illegal wars, and war crimes. We'll begin marching around 6 o'clock. I just wanted everybody to know. Um, just around 6 o'clock. I'd like to take a minute to read for you a letter which was written by veterans and activists addressed to President Obama. This letter has been delivered to his campaign at all of these cities across the United States. We know that the campaign office in Alabama and in Sacramento and D.C. has received the letter and many of these offices have agreed to send a letter to the central campaign office. So here, here is what these veterans and activists are saying. President Obama, as U.S. veterans and allies, we ask you to uphold your campaign promises by freeing private first class Bradley Manning. Today, September 6, 2012, we gather at presidential campaign offices nationwide in protest of the mistreatment endured by military whistleblower and Nobel Peace Prize nominee Bradley Manning. We promise not to give up until President Obama answers our demands. In order to uphold campaign promises to create the most transparent government in history, the President must recognize PSC Manning as a whistleblower and remedy the injustices he has faced over two years in U.S. military custody. Our demands are as follows. Three-star General George Flynn must be held accountable for ordering PFC Manning to be held for nine months in conditions declared cruel, inhuman, and degrading by UN Special Reporter and Torture Juan Mendez. Under direction from then Lieutenant General Flynn, TFC Manning was not allowed regular exercise or sunlight and was even forced to stand at attention naked. General Flynn should be disciplined for issuing illegal orders that fly in the face of U.S.-led international treaties. Though he's yet to be convicted of any crime, TFC Manning has already been severely punished Additionally, military prosecutors have repeatedly failed to provide PSC Manning's defense all relevant evidence in a timely manner. Despite there being no evidence that information released led to injury of any American citizen, he has already spent over 825 days in prison. Therefore, we ask that President Obama pardon PFC Manning for remaining charges and seek to ensure the international human rights of other servicemen and women will be respected. While we would defend the rights outlined above for any member of the armed services, we support PFC Manning especially due to the patriotic motivations behind the actions attributed to him and the positive impacts that have come from them. For example, we believe it would be appropriate for President Obama to acknowledge the role that those actions have played in ending the Iraq War. During the 2008 campaign, a majority of Americans, as well as the majority of those enlisted, believe that U.S. forces should be withdrawn from Iraq. Many people voted for President Obama because he believed he would end that war. Despite the wishes of the American people, President Obama sought to keep troops in Iraq past the originally planned 2011 deadline. Documents allegedly released by PFC Manning helped American citizens understand why the war had not ended sooner. The 
These reasons included a failure of the command to adequately discipline soldiers who would discredit the U.S. military in the eyes of the world by wrongfully killing civilians. The release of improperly classified documents via WikiLeaks provided an opportunity for President Obama to grant the new Iraqi government more independence as planned and to bring American taxpayer dollars home and use them to treat traumatized veterans. Brother Manny served with conscience. Words attributed to him in May 2010 show he acted because he wanted people to see the truth, because without information, you cannot make informed decisions as a public. President Obama made a similar statement in May 2011 when he stated, in the 21st century, information is power. The truth cannot be hidden, and the legitimacy of government will ultimately depend on active and informed citizens. We now ask that President Obama honor those words by freeing American truth teller Bradley Manning. So I mentioned we'll be marching at six. We're going to be marching to an event that consists of local government officials, activists, and donors to the Obama campaign. These are people who we believe should be supporting Bradley Manning. Both of progressives should join us in calling for Bradley Manning to be honored as a whistleblower and free. So we'll be delivering this letter and asking them to endorse us, as well as to send this message to Obama. So we're looking to set a peaceful tone for the event today, and it's important that all of you join us in doing that. Before we start marching, though, we do have one action we'd like you all to join us in here. So we'd like everybody to take out their cell phones and help us call the Obama campaign office right now. That's something, something that you, the viewer, can do at home. Uh, as soon as I get the number, I'll let you know. Here. So this will just take a minute. The number, please. So if you're sitting around and uh, make sure you call One of the Obama campaign office's jobs is to register issues that people around the country care about. That's one of their main functions, actually. They make a tally mark every time somebody calls them about an issue. So we've called the office today, but we'd like all of you to join us in calling it right now. This is the central office in Chicago, the nationwide office. And the number is... 312 Again, the number is 312 Six nine eight three one six two seven zero six nine eight. So at your home, do make three, call the six, campaign headquarters. Seven zero. And you'll be calling the national uh, headquarters of the Obama for President campaign. Let them know that you support Bradley Manning and. Also, let them know that you support Occupy, and that. So that number is Obama's uh, central campaign headquarters office that we're going to overwhelm with uh, messages for Bradley. We'll be doing it again later, and we'll keep calling. We definitely want to uh, clog their lines and with messages of support for Bradley. So we're going to be marching pretty soon um, to the uh, official San Francisco. Uh, viewing party of the nomination acceptance speech, and we're going to let them know um, that there's people that support Bradley. Um, right now, we're going to have Bill Crichton from Veterans for Peace speak, and then we're going to march after that. Hope you all will join us. Good talk. Hello, everybody. I would just like to take a minute to talk about courage. Now, picture yourself at a desk. You're getting ready to get up and walk away, and you have a disc. That disc has 250,000 documents on that, 
outlying lies, bullying of nations that don't go along with you. It's a list of documents to show how foreign diplomacy works. And you know when that disc gets out, it's going to be a hard rain going to fall. Your life is going to change. So the courage that it takes to walk out of that office, I think about this office, I can't imagine doing it. I was in the Navy with the Clarence years ago, and you know it's going to be a bad day when he walks out of the office and let's assume it was Bradley Mann and if he is the one, that's what you have to say right at this point. He knows he could go to jail for life. He knew that he could be walking the last mile. But he did it. He did it because he thought it was the right thing to do. And the people in this country should know how it really works. A lot of times it takes 40, 50 years, 100 years to find out what really went on history in the making. He did it by releasing it to someone who published it. Well, when they tracked down who they thought they did it, they put him away for a long time because they tried to turn him against Julian Assange. Well, they're still waiting to get a hold of Julian. But not only did that, they put him in solitary confinement. You know everything that happened. If it wasn't for the work of the Bradley Manning support group, he'd still be there. It took the shame cast upon the United States by the rest of the world. Prominent figures of peace throughout the rest of the world that said, what are you doing? How are you, why are you treating someone this way? This is an abomination. It wasn't until that happened, and there was also another battle going on, actually, if you don't know about it, within the military. The Army was upset because Bradley Manning was being held in a Marine jail. They wouldn't let the Army get a hold of him. So there were so many irregularities about this, but he stood strong. Whatever he suffered from them, he decided. We knew that they weren't going to break him, although apparently they'd been close a few times. But he walked out of the jail, the Marine jail, and went to better conditions. And who knows what's going to happen next. That's why the family Manning support group needs to be supported. We need to get the envelope. We need to send money. Remember, if it's been to the pizza parties, send uh, envelopes to everybody. They've been very uh, uh, generous in Bradley Manning. The point of the news, and I'm sure they can need more help. Speaking of the news, I mean, Bradley Manning was on the front page. Oh, probably for a couple of weeks with the leaks in the United States. 250,000 documents. They were done with it, covering that within a week. You had to go to the Guardian in England to find more about it. You can still find out about it if you to the Guardian. But in one week, it was over. Like everything else that goes on, it lasts about a week. Then it goes to the page, all the way back to the page, and then it's off the newspaper. So it takes events like these, and it takes a place of strong amount of support to get their lives to embarrass the government to what they're doing. Government wants to make sure nobody ever does this again. They want to severely punish him because they don't want to see this happen again. So Bradley Man needs continued support. He needs uh, great legal defense. The support of people, for example, Daniel Ellsberg, for the Pentagon Papers, he'll be the first to tell you there's a big difference between his release, and he has a funny section in this book called Secrets. So we're trying to get the uh, Pentagon Papers out. They're up late at night and cranking the stuff out on a machine to make extra copies for everybody. Well, it took them uh, hours and days. Now it's a click of the button and it's all over. The other thing that Daniel Ellsberg will tell you the big difference between Bradley Manning and Daniel Ellsberg's case is that Daniel Ellsberg was a civilian. He was a prominent man with a, a, a significant past within the uh, brand corporation, within the government, within the military. He had access to great legal defense. And again, a civilian. He was a foreign the rights as a civilian. Bradley Manning doesn't have any of that. He comes under military law. He's a kid-known man. Somebody 
we never heard of before. Really had no support group until the people here today came to his defense. So that's a big difference between it. He's on his own in the military law, and as I said, it's the Battle Man support group that's keeping this in the papers, and they need everybody's support. So I just want everybody again to think of the courage, and I want you to think about somebody getting up from their desk with a disc, walking away with information that's going to embarrass the machine. Can you imagine that? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. All right, we're going to get ready to march. Um, do you want to take a point? Um, when we march, this is the Obama notice. He was actually created the night that Obama won the Nobel Peace Prize so that we could take him out on the street and talk about how a war criminal could win the Peace Prize. But he's very uh, wind vulnerable, so if we could get maybe two volunteers to kind of help us steer him, um, I don't think we can steer him in the right direction, but we're going to steer him in the right direction for our march. Okay? <laughs> We also have a supporter, so please pick up some posters. Uh, I think there's some back here. And uh, we have plenty, so please uh, pick them up. And uh, yeah, so this event is at 18th and Shot Wheel. So we're going to march down Mission here and take a left on 18th. And Matt Obama, there in uh, Charlotte, what's going on with Robbie. So uh, let's go. We got our little popo escort. There's a chance, so we want to teach everybody besides the simple one, which is free, 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 deadly manning, free, 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 deadly manning, free, 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 deadly manning, free, 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 deadly manning. Free, 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 deadly manning. Free, 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 deadly manning. Okay, here's the one I want to teach you. When we were sitting inside the Earth and Obama headquarters waiting to be arrested, everybody outside was chanting this, and it helped us sit still for three hours while they decided to bust us. Two parts. I got some gossip for you. Okay. If you don't already know it. Some people give us money and some people give us money. I'm on my way to New York, or DC and New York on Tuesday. I'm excited. I got a, got a crew together and um, I think I have enough people where I might start a van and, and start a van. We are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for a Bradley Manning. Run. Run. We are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for a Bradley Manning. We are uh, the people too. Uh, a little bit louder. Three. That's good. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our family. Man, we are the people too. A little bit louder. Three. We want freedom for our yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, just take a dime, no rush. Yeah, right. I'm certainly yeah. not in one. We're doing uh, uh, the right one. Uh, Street. Uh, Street. Uh, Street. Uh, Street. 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 All right, we got a nice crowd of about 75 people that are here and uh, demonstrating their support for Bradley Manning, American hero. And like I said, uh, 
make sure you give the Abominator headquarters a call. That number is 312-698-3670. Call up campaign headquarters and let them know that President Obama should, he should issue an executive order that pardons Bradley Manning for anything that he did. And we don't believe that what he did was a crime, by the way, so we're not asking you to say that he's pardoned for his crime. We're asking you to say pardon him regardless. Because this man was brave enough and he believed in what he was doing to do what he did. He didn't it wasn't for money, it wasn't for glory, it wasn't for power. It was because he believed in justice and he wanted to end the murder of innocent civilians by the United States government around the world. That number again for the Obama headquarters is 312-698-3670. And I'm sorry for yelling, but I'm competing with a couple of Harley Davidson hunkers right to my left, so uh, there we go. Yeah, I like it when it goes slow. You know, why are we in such a rush? You know, it took all the time to come out here and you know, so let's take our time. One thing about being in a wheelchair, I will teach you, is patience. You know, it's actually done a lot for my whole it's, it's dog and it's life. Bradley Manning, one, two, Bradley Manning, Manning, yeah, right in my ear, dude. They're expressing their support for Bradley Manning. And not sure they got the popo being jerks. Free! Free! Free Bradley Manning! 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 Free! Okay. Free! Free Bradley Manning! Free! Thank you, thank you. We are enjoying a lot of support here at the Mission District.
Mark's just getting a little split up right now. But we're together. Lots of people on the sidewalk waving to the crowd in support of Bradley Manning, American hero. Right? The U.S. military needs more people like Bradley Manning and less people like that are killing. Right? The U.S. US military should not be used as an instrument of aggression, but rather an instrument of defense. And it's anything but defensive. The only thing that the, United, that the military depends nowadays are the interests of Wall Street and defense contractors. to go to our destination. I've been out a block and a half, actually. We're at uh, the corner of 18th and Mission Street in the sunny Mission District of San Francisco. We're glad that you can join us and watch. And uh, do make sure you give that call to Obama headquarters. The number is 312-698-3670. So if you don't get through once, keep calling back. And if you can't call today, make some time and call tomorrow. We need to let Obama know that we do not support what he said about Bradley Manning, and we demand that he be freed. So, uh, so get out there and don't be passive, but be a participant, because we need everybody to make this possible. And we couldn't do it without you, as a matter of fact. If you have some extra cash that you'd like to give, well, you can send that to, uh, I don't know the exact address, but Google it on the web. It's called Courage to Resist. There's also the Bradley Manning Support Group, and they've done a hell of a job of raising money to get good legal representation for Bradley Manning because he has the whole forces, all the forces, and all the, the resources of the United States military and the United States government directed at him. So any little bit that you can afford or that you can give, we would be most grateful. That's because they're looking for a fugitive downtown on my way down here. Oh, so they had mega cops. Else? Mega cops. Well, uh, then somebody then stole a bag of donuts. Oh, oh, oh. I see. That is a crime. You know, it's like whenever we have a demonstration, uh, generally we have a excess of police, but when you're getting your ass kicked down some alley, and you're trying to get the attention of the police department, they're nowhere to be found. And that's the injustice, one of the injustices that we have to live with here in the United States of America. And that's probably anywhere, though, because cops are cops around the world. Doesn't matter what country they're from, most of them are still assholes. <laughs> There's an occasional good cop. Just try getting a straight answer from a police officer. That ain't never happened. You might as well go ask President Obama what his intentions are as to go ask a police officer what his intentions are. Because neither one of them will tell you. And they'll always, they'll always do their best to, to, uh, to um, what's the word for it? Uh, well, anyway, they'll try to, 
They'll try to like lie. They won't lie to you. They just won't speak to you. So that's kind of way. That's kind of the way Obama does it, right? He's not gonna. You know, he's not gonna answer any of your your concerns in his speeches. And if you uh, happen to be unlucky enough to watch, to be forced to watch the Democratic uh, nominating speech by President Obama, uh, then you'll know what I'm talking about. They'll talk about everything but the issues that are crucial to uh, you and I. Right? All the great things that he's done for the American public, yet there's more Americans that are collecting food stamps today, are living in poverty, more and more people that were close and kicked out of their homes than ever before. So that's a sorry state of American, American life today. So if you got a home to live in and you got a job, that's your blessing. Our streamers. Uh, he's on uh, ustream.tv slash channels slash I E W E of Ra R E H. And uh, you can watch his stream as well. And he streams a lot. He's around town. Mr. James there. And I'm always glad, he's glad to see him. And uh, we're headed for a, I believe, a office. I uh, can't remember what this place was. But this be to join. There's windows on this side and there's windows around back, so we need some people around back too. You're right. And here we are. Thanks. So we all come over here. It's a large number of people you'll support. Oh, I think we should keep blocking the street. So we're here at some building. This is some kind of campaign headquarters for somebody. Oh, no, this is union office right here. That's what it is. I can't remember what union it is, but it is a union office. Day laborers union hall. Okay. For our viewers out there. And uh, I'm always grateful that you're watching. Uh, you can go, I'm trying to get my web... I got my website up, and I got it coded without errors. Um, and that website is... Uh, activiststream.com a c t i v i s t s t r e a m dot com and uh, I don't have it uh, completely done yet but as soon as I as it's finished uh, you'll be able to uh, stream right off of our site without resorting to commercial capitalist uh, providers and uh, we'll have our own network set up and this happened probably when I get back from the East Coast and if you follow me uh, you do know that I'm going to be in New York City and uh, Washington, D.C. I'm leaving on the 11th of September. I'll be in Washington on the, from the 12th to the 14th. And I'll be in New York City from the 15th to the 20th. And then back to D.C. from the 21st to the 25th. And I will be attending plenty of, of events, and um, mostly, uh, direct, mostly centered around Occupy Wall Street. And uh, we'll be up 24-7, or as... as, as long as I can stay awake or get, not get arrested or my equipment holds out, I'm going to be working with uh, GlobalRevolution.tv and we'll be doing commentary. Not only will we be covering the events down on Wall Street, but we will also be providing uh, relevant political commentary from a number of different sources. So do check in for that. It promises to be most interesting. And uh, if you're on the West Coast, you get to see how it's done on the East Coast. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, let's go around the other side. We're going to go around the other side and check it out, folks. See what's going on. We want to give you every every possible angle that we can because we do believe in information. And uh, right now we're moving there, sir. Just want to go around and check it out. Oh, it's Laborers and National Union Local 261 is the uh, is the union hall. We're just gonna check out what's off to the side. Oh, good, nice crowd down here as well. First time I've ever seen police officers protecting a union hall in San Francisco. <laughs> Noted enemies of the of the labor movement here in San Francisco. Um, and then when the police officers' association cries about not getting enough public support, 
well, they don't get any support from the unions is because they've been openly involved in union busting activities. So, and despite the fact that they generally garner all the benefits that come along with union membership. So, you know, maybe they should be thanking the unions instead of trying to bust them up. And you know, I'm patently outspoken about everything. I don't care. I'm not afraid. And you got to be that way too out there, viewers. Right? You can't be scared of these people. Right? They're people just like you and I. And you have to, one day you have to be determined to take a stand for justice. You just can't sit there on your ass watching TV and expect things to change. Or even on your butt watching live streams, right? We want you out here, right? We want you out here participating. You know, it doesn't take too much effort to come out here. It doesn't take me that much effort to do live streams, right? I've devoted my life to it, you know? So we want you to do the same thing. We have eyes and ears everywhere. Well, then it makes it that much harder for the people in power to keep committing their injustices and for inequality to, to continue in our society. And uh, we got it straight from here from Freeman Sullivan. Uh, if you'd like to tweet me or participate in chat, uh, my uh, tweet handle is at Freeman Sullivan. Or if you'd like to email me, it's Freeman Sullivan at gmail.com. And I'm happy, as always, to uh, listen and, and discuss anything with you. Uh, do remember that when you are engaging me that I try to keep an open mind about everything. So, we're good here so and, uh, don't hesitate to tell me what you think. On the other side is, is where they can see us from inside in the windows, so we want to have a presence here and on the other side. And, uh, yeah, basically guilt trip them. Alright, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the unions. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the unions in America these days. We're going to hang out here as long as uh, you want to. Well, yes, I do know what's going on with unions in America. Uh, uh, currently, uh, well, Communication Workers of America to the other side, that's is currently working without a contract uh, for Verizon Corporation. Uh, Verizon is not negotiating in good faith. And I have two, two of my brother-in-laws work as tech service technicians for Communication Workers of America. So uh, it's a big shout-out to them. Let them know that we're uh, supporting them here in San Francisco and around the United States in their efforts to obtain a, a contract that provides for them and their families and uh, no more takeaways. Uh, Verizon Corporation uh, basically would like to see the union gone. They've even gone so far as to, to uh, prohibit organizing with wireless workers, which is basically the future of tele telephony in this country. So we're glad to see, uh, you know, we're glad to see they're still strong and that we support them. That's a nice poster. Let's uh, show that to the, to the people at home. Friendly, friendly, friendly photo. Right. And uh, there's a URL at the bottom, bradleymanning.org. Uh, please log on to that website, check it out. And uh, if you have any extra money, uh, please donate to this American Heroes Legal Defense. Uh, the costs are extremely high, as you know, and, uh, he, he, you know, and also I believe that you can find more information if you don't have any money. It only costs 25, 27 cents for a stamp, and you can write him a letter. People in prison need plenty of contact with the outside world, and uh, we need you to write a letter to Bradley Manning and let him know that you support what he did. And that'll go a long way in helping him uh, make it through his extremely difficult process because uh, he's not even allowed to have visitors other than his lawyers. And being in a military prison is much, much, much harsher, and and it's it's it would break an ordinary man. But Bradley Manning's an American hero, and I'm going to keep saying that because I do believe it. So thanks. thanks. So uh, we're going to hang out until the presidency starts at seven, and then we're going to all chant on the other side. What starts at seven? Speech. That's when the president. Uh, President speaks to Charlotte, oh. and they're gonna show it here, and we're gonna drown it out with chanting. So, excellent. They won't be able to hear it inside I like if we chanting. all chant. I'm Buddhist. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We are. Where the voice of America is great. Yeah. You know, by the way, Bradley Manning isn't a criminal. You're not a criminal until you're convicted in this country. And Obama had the temerity to say that he, oh, that uh, Bradley Manning is guilty. 
right? And uh, uh, who made him judge, jury, and executioner? He's president and part of the part of the uh, executive branch, so he doesn't really have the authority to make any kind of judicial decisions. So uh, he was acting outside of his authority, which the president always does, because when you give us somebody absolute power, it corrupts them absolutely. So we got plenty of popo down here to keep us company, as usual. I guess they're afraid of getting their butts kicked. Just being San Francisco and all. <laughs> yeah, we're a little more laid back here. But uh, when the shit hits the fan, trust me, San Francisco is more than capable of raising hell. I've been to quite a few little burning parties. Yeah, I didn't care too much for that movie. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was a very good movie. Could have been a lot better for all the money that they spent on it. It was something, yeah. It was something. Well, I need to. Because uh, the English are. You know, English are running about 20% unemployment right now. Things are tough. They're a lot tougher over in England than they are over in the United States. And then I was uh, hearing today that uh, Spain, the unemployment rate's 27%. Uh, one in four, more than one in four people are out of a job there. Unemployment rate in, in Greece is running about about almost 30 percent now so one in one one in three people in Greece are unemployed uh, it's pretty bad it's gotten so bad that a lot of normal people have gotten involved in uh, fascist neo-fascism and neo-nazism in Greece it's become a problem uh, because people don't know where to turn to and they became uh, hysterical uh, so do yourself a favor don't ever entertain thoughts of working you know work, or even think about working with fascists uh, so you'll know, you'll know what happens. Uh, everybody knows what happens when you work with fascists. You end up with a world war. So never forget that. Oh, something else I wanted to bring up with my viewers is that the uh, state of California just passed a law that makes it illegal to criticize the Israeli government. So uh, if you happen to be, uh, uh, since it seems like war with Iran is imminent, and uh, it's going to be any any day any day after the election. Uh, the only reason why they haven't gone in already is because uh, the Democrats fear that uh, if a war starts, that the Democratic Party will be split and Obama won't won't have the support he needs to get elected. So, uh, at any rate, uh, it's now against the law in the state of California to openly criticize the Israeli government. Uh, I'm sure that this is going to be challenged in court. Uh, there's no way that I'd see this actually uh, becoming permanent law. And, uh, right, uh, it was actually started as a way to muzzle students that are on UC campuses. And that's that's the way that got started. So uh, if you haven't known about this already, uh, uh, and I found out just the other day, yeah, this is in the state of California, that, uh, that uh, Google it and do a little research. Um, you know, I really don't know. I don't know if you can actually get any jail time. But I do know that you can get... Uh, expelled from uh, any UC or California state campus. So if you have like a, a support group that's supporting Palestinian liberation or just basically against Israeli, Israeli, well what they say is that when you criticize the Israeli government they use the race card against you and they say that you're anti-Semitic. As if uh, criticizing the Israeli government is an anti-Semitic act. Uh, I guess if you criticize the American government well then you're anti-American and that you must hate Americans. So, uh, you know, and to uh, all the people in the Israeli government, stay the fuck out of our American affairs. Please quit lobbying our government. Uh, please quitting, uh, quit asking us to pay for your military defense. Uh, right, well, and we're asking, we ask that you quit your oppression of Palestinians. Uh, but most of all, stay the hell out of our affairs, Israeli government. Essentially the same thing. 
So yeah, I found that to be most disconcerting. If you want to change the rules, outright violation of the First Amendment. I'm gonna roll around here to the front and see what's going on the other side here. So glad you could join us. We got a crowd of about 30 or 40 people out here now. We're waiting, uh, we're actually out here waiting for the Obama uh, inauguration speech to start. Personally, I uh, I pretty much tend to think everything the president says is a lie, and uh, I'm not going to waste my time listening to somebody lying to me. I have better things to do in my own uh, my own life. I don't plan on voting for either of uh, either Obama or Mitt Romney. I think they're both losers, and uh, the only thing that they have to uh, their agenda basically is enriching the rich and keeping the poor people poor and oppressed. So uh, if I were you, I wouldn't even bother. I don't even care what they say. I, you know, I find it abhorrent, and uh, and generally it just makes me angry. And uh, I really do like my serenity and my peace. So I'm not going to bother. Um, if you do, if you do vote, you know, and I'm not saying don't vote. Um, I don't advocate not voting at all because I think if you don't vote at all, that you're giving up your rights as an American citizen. But I would tend to congregate. I would tend to concentrate on issues that are related to your community and your state. And you can participate. Uh, I do believe in voting and things like propositions uh, because if uh, the citizens of the state of California had not voted in 1996 to uh, support medical cannabis, uh, then we wouldn't have uh, the rights as medical cannabis patients that we enjoy in the state of California today. And voting in uh, regional, state, and local uh, issues actually does have an effect, as opposed to voting for president, where you have no choice. Um, but if you do want to vote for president, I suggest that you check out some of the other candidates, like uh, Jill Stein, who's uh, running from the Green Party, or Roseanne Barr, who's running for peace and freedom, or any of the other third feds. Okay, right. Consider voting for a third party because um, if enough people do vote for third party candidates, well, then it's only it's only going to be a matter of time before their issues are given relevancy here, and they will be covered by MSN and not by independent journalists like myself. But if voting really changed anything, they'd make it illegal. Most of the people have moved over to the side of the building here. Ugh. Nice to see. Nice to see a new union hall here in San Francisco. How you doing? here and see if I can get some interviews with people. Maybe talk about a little bit more about Bradley Manning and his situation. Uh, there's a Scott Wiener over by the entrance, one of the San Francisco supervisor from District 8. I think it's District 8.
I think that when you pay too much attention to these idiots uh, in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, you're actually giving them more credence and more validity to their uh, whatever kind of issues that they're espousing. So uh, I would boycott them altogether. Uh, don't even bother giving them any of your time. Tell Obama to free Bradley Manning and because you know ultimately your vote really, when you vote for president, it really has no meaning. It's all bought and paid for by Wall Street interest and corporate interest. Big oil, big tobacco, big big pharma, big agro, all the big money people, right? Because Obama, you know, the, the you know political organization in this country believe that that they can have more that money has more of an effect than people power. And as somebody who's participated and organized many many demonstrations over the last 40 years. I can tell you that people power is very powerful and it does have an effect. And if enough people are out there and show their support, well then you can actually affect real change in society. Hey, thank you, Courtney. Um, no, people aren't actually going inside. I'm not real sure if they are going to be allowed inside or not. But both entrances are blocked. And anyway, conventions, political conventions in the United States basically are it's basically a show, a spectacle. Actually, it's quite boring for the most part. And uh, if you have trouble sleeping, just turn on the uh, turn on the convention speeches, and I'm sure you'll find a great sleeping pill without taking a sleeping pill. Oh yeah. Well, you know, there's not much going on, and this gives me a chance. It's my bully pulpit. It's my bully pulpit. But, uh, I actually don't see anybody that's any of the organizers, but. We'll get them online and get them to speak a little bit. Uh, there are people going in and out, and uh, we're not trying to block the uh, to keep people from entering. So I've seen you around, but I haven't ever looked in your face before. Oh. You're clear from back when we started. Oh, yeah, years and years ago. That's right. I'm still organizing. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Uh, a lot more successfully these days, too. Yeah. Because yeah. I have a little more, a lot, a lot more, a lot more people that are, that I'm working with that, you know, that came into my world over, over many, many years. Mm-hmm. So. You were in the thick of Occupy. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And uh, you think that was something? Wait until after the election. I got some shit planned that uh, is going to really sh- going to surprise people. And uh, I've been hard at work uh, forming a coalition of groups and using all my connections, my legal connections, and everything. Uh, and we're getting ready to uh, do some actions on behalf of uh, uh, tenants that live in the Sixth Street corridor and in the tenor line. With, um, uh, those guys at the at the Redstone Building. Uh, no, I work. Um, I'm actually started out, but when I started out working with the SRO Collaborative and the Tenderloin Housing Clinic, but now it's turning out that the Tenderloin Housing Clinic is one of the organizations that uh, is holding up any kind of progress in terms of proper conditions. So uh, I'm probably might have to resign my uh, my job with them, and uh, because uh, we're I got the tenants pretty well organized. Uh, by the time we get ready to make our move, I'm going to have a real nice group of tenants. That took me a year and a half <laughs> of, of, of just demonstrating that I am an effective organizer because most people, you know, they're, they're scared and you have to give them something to believe in, you know. And I don't want them to believe in me. I want them to believe in themselves and, uh, and then they can see that we can actually affect change. So... Just voting, just people raising money. Oh yeah, they're uh, they're the democratic hypocrites. You know, they're they're the kind of people that would come down to Occupy and say that they supported us, right? But when Ed Lee made the order to sick the cops on us, 
they they did absolutely nothing but sit back and watch, right? The only person I could even say even did anything well there was Eric Marr. He did come out. He did stop the police one night, and uh, what's his name? Uh, who ran for mayor? Uh, uh, John Avalos was another one who did support us, and uh, but everybody else they just sat back and watched. You know, because you're really interested in. Uh, um, Ask Obama to stop the drone. Making real and effective change in society. You're not a member of the Democratic Party. I would say a lot of people are just sort of going with the flow. The people who actually pay attention to world events and know what's been going on in the last four years. You should just be clear with people. Look, more war, more overt governmental violence against the people inside this country, more spying, more shredding of what people used to think of as their fundamental rights, their political rights. And this all came in because he was capable of doing things that no other president could have done because he was the first black president and he came in after George Bush and people, many, many people wanted to believe so badly that they were going to get change without I do. doing more than voting. Well, without doing, but you see, you didn't think you were going to get changed without doing something more than voting. A lot of people think that's how you get it, and that they haven't gotten it is uh, something people have to confront. Oh, here yeah, I'm getting ready to fly out to the East Coast uh, to participate in uh, activities in um, in Virginia, Washington D.C., and New York City. Uh, there's plenty of stuff going on in the East Coast, San Francisco's not the only place where things are happening. So uh, I'm real excited to do that. Meet up with a lot of organizers I know on the East Coast who are, who are uh, devoted to a change and to making change in our society. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm totally clueless about the time right now. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. We'll be in the belly of the beast, Washington, D.C. Out there, I'm out there struggling for you, and I'll be out there live streaming for you out there. So uh, do uh, do check in, uh, follow my tweets at Freeman Sullivan. Uh, you can email me Freeman Sullivan at gmail.com. And uh, when I'm at least live streaming, if you have something important that you'd like to contact me about, if you'd like me to come out and live stream your events, uh, if you have something that's uh, politically motivated, you can call me. My name is Clark Sullivan. My number is 415-499-2780. And I'll be happy to uh, come out and live stream your event. I'm always interested in what people are doing. And uh, so uh, don't be shy. I love talking with people. And uh, I want to hear from you. And if you're looking for places to hook in while you're in New York, um, you could also call me for that too because uh, I'm pretty much got my my finger on the pulse of what's going on, and uh, so don't be shy. Pretty calm right here right now. Pretty quiet. I probably may not stay for. For Obama's speech because I have work to do at home. Um, as many of you know, I'm a web developer and I have a lot of developing to do. <laughs> uh, so I'm always working. When I'm not live streaming or or sleeping, I'm generally at work, hard at work. And it's something I enjoy, but it still is work. And, you know, I'm dedicated to bringing you all the information that's relevant to our struggle for equality. Give you a little shot of the president and thief. And actually, before Obama was elected, I had a lot of respect for him as a community organizer. Um, and now, as you know, as you've been listening to me, that I've lost my respect for him. <coughs> Especially if I'm finding out that uh, he was actually uh, making deals with uh, Timothy Geithner and the rest of the Wall Street banksters and it actually sold us out in the American public to the big banks before he was even elected president in order to 
campaign, uh, Garner campaign funds. So I'm pretty sure that Timothy Geithner made sure he paid Obama handsomely to be uh, nominated for Secretary of the Treasury. And uh, number one, uh, one of the top crooks in America, Timothy Geithner. So uh, remember that. He's a Secretary of Treasury. Uh, basically what's happening right now with the financial situation is that uh, I believe it was Paul Simon, uh, former Secretary of the Treasury, I think you now, or no, it's Paul Boker, um, who's the head of the Federal Reserve. Um, they're talking about trying to lower the interest rates some more to generate more lending and more capital. And uh, quite frankly, I don't really see how they can lower interest rates anymore when uh, the big banks pretty much get their money at 0% interest. So uh, maybe if they're talking about lowering the interest rate on my credit card, I might be interested in supporting something like that. But as it is, uh, credit card interest is 18%, sometimes as much as 24%. So lowering interest rates for the banks uh, the banks certainly aren't going to lower their interest rates to me, so more bullshit coming out of the Federal Reserve. Don't believe a word that they say. Uh, maybe if they lower your uh, lower your credit card interest rate or the, the rate that it takes for you to borrow money, which I don't advise, by the way. Uh, I generally live my life without having to borrow money. I believe that when you borrow money, that that makes you beholden to other people and that you lose your personal autonomy. So uh, I don't recommend borrowing money unless you're absolutely, it's absolutely necessary uh, because you're just going to end up being a debt slave in addition to being a wage slave. So, uh, and especially if you're maxing your credit cards out. Uh, generally, I only have mine. Uh, I only use mine in cases of emergency when there's no other way. So uh, stay away from the credit card, the, uh, the plastic. Yeah, it is. It is. I got to just go look at it. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we people a little. Shot really isn't much to see in here. Helps American citizens understand why the war has not ended sooner. These reasons included a failure of the command to adequately discipline soldiers who would discredit the U.S. military in the eyes of the world by wrongfully killing civilians. There's Pew. The release of improperly classified documents through WikiLeaks. Provided an opportunity for President Obama to grant new Iraqi government. Yeah, I don't know, but longer I'm going to stay there here, folks, because, uh, like I said, I'm a busy man. But I did want to come down here and live stream this to you. And again, contact me if you have an event that you would like for me to come and live stream. I'll do it free of charge. Uh, I might ask for a cup of coffee, but that's about it. Absolutely lovely day here in San Francisco. Oh, that's right. That's right. We now ask the President Obama honor those words by creating her to tell our brown man. Help me sleep. Watching all these college tricksters. Good sleeping pill. It should always have updates. Yeah, because change doesn't come by making speeches. Change comes through direct action. Free Bradley Manning! 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 Yeah, just go and go fuck yourself! You crook! That was a uh, police chief. Or no, no. He was a district attorney. Gascom. Never a more boring speaker I've ever ever witnessed in my life. George Gascon. Uh, he's from Arizona, Mesa, former police chief there. Uh, he was appointed police chief here in San Francisco. And then uh, decided to resign and uh, seek a more lucrative, uh, a more lucrative job as district attorney of San Francisco. And uh, I certainly wouldn't vote for him, and I didn't. Actually, actually, uh, 
in one of the groups that I'm a member of, Americans for Safe Access, I warned them about supporting George Gascon and that he was an opportunist and basically he would say anything to medical cannabis patients to get their vote. And uh, actually, uh, there was a lot of uh, rumor, rumor mill was floating around about George Gascon that he was actually uh, involved in the arrest and prosecution of medical cannabis patients here in San Francisco, which is an issue many of you know is near and dear to my heart. And uh, man, I was getting ready to, to turn up the flames on him, but uh, his office actually issued a public apology and said that they were not prosecuting this one individual that they had in custody and he was released in a couple of days. So putting public pressure on our elected officials, especially locally, does have an effect. And I encourage you to, uh, to do so um, because things will happen. And uh, if you have enough people out there that are working, well, then you can make change. And uh, we're fortunate here in San Francisco uh, that we have a lot of access to our elected officials because it is a small city and you do run into the people. It's really hard for people to hide here. Uh, it's not actually next to impossible to hide out in San Francisco. You have to leave the city. So uh, we are fortunate that we do have access to our elected officials. But uh, yeah, getting back to George Gascon, uh, he came to our group to uh, to ask for our support. And boy, man, that guy, if he knew how to speak in like more than one tone, I might have been interested in listening to what he had to say, but it was just so boring that, uh, you know, I, I tuned him out. And uh, God, if he was that boring and speaking to a large group, you can only imagine what he sounds like when he gets in front of a jury. You know, the droning will start, and I don't mean the uh, the killing kind. Actually, he could probably kill you with boredom. So, uh, how he ever uh, got to work just chops as a trial attorney is beyond me. I guess he was good at making uh, backroom deals, which is generally the bread and butter of every American politician or any politician in any country around the world. Uh, most of the uh, decisions are already made uh, before they even have a chance to get any kind of public input, and, uh, and that's the way that works, you know. So, I really have no belief in the American political system, positive belief. Uh, it's fraught with, basically if you have money, you have more influence. If you're just a poor person and you're trying to survive, you have pretty much next to nothing. But we do have influence when we band together and make our voices heard. I can't say this enough to the viewers out there. I know I might be viewing, boring some of you, but damn, right? We have to get stay together and organize. It's important, more important now than it ever was because our future of generations are at stake. Um, as you know, when a child is born at birth, an American child, that they're already $2,000 in debt. Uh, that's before, right when they come out of the womb, I did a little uh, research, and an average child is born with about $2,100 worth of net debt. And most of that debt uh, is, the, is the national debt. Uh, many of you know that are, are aware of that our currency and our money is not actually printed up and distributed by the United States government. Our money is printed up and distributed by a privately owned corporation, not a publicly owned, a privately owned corporation, which is known as the Federal Reserve Bank. And they pretty much control the flow of money here in the United States, not the federal government. Uh, actually, the federal government has no authority to appoint the Federal Reserve Chairman. It has no authority over the Federal Reserve Bank. So, if you think your money says, we're living in America. Okay, it's good to see you. Alrighty, man, have a good trip. So, just a little information out there for you. That uh, your money isn't even printed up. Isn't even really worth the paper that it's printed on. And, if, you know, it's not backed by gold or silver anymore. And if your confidence in the dollar, if you stop believing in it and the value of it, well, then that value would definitely drop on the world markets. Uh, for any of you that pay attention to that sort of thing, uh, when they have currency trading that goes on every day and night uh, by computer, that when a government's uh, authority is being threatened by the people or it looks like it's ready to topple for one reason or another, 
their currency drops as well because people lose confidence in the ability of the banks to be able to back up that currency should you decide that you want true value for your money. And there was at one time in this country that you could actually go into the bank and if you had a dollar you could actually get a dollar's worth of gold. Uh, that was called the gold standard. And uh, lo and behold a lot of the Republicans seem to be supporting the gold standard after they've got done ripping out any kind of like basis for our for uh, the financial uh, liquidity here in our country and now they're all espousing well maybe we should go back to the gold standard uh, which quite frankly I never see that happening uh, I don't I actually don't ever see that happening I think it's just a, a ploy by it's another like a ploy by the Republicans like Obama tells you that he's going to close down Guantanamo Bay and he's going to stop the uh, the war in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan you know, and then after they get elected, it's always another story. So, uh, so that gold standard thing, I was just, uh, just another empty campaign promise made by the Republicans. Uh, for many of you uh, out there, you know, I don't support either one. Uh, they're not going to get any change by supporting somebody who's running for president. Uh, stay away from making any kind of campaign donations. Uh, basically, you're better off by not even... You're not even like, but not even pay attention to what these people say, other than when it becomes harmful to you as an American citizen. So, and then in, like, I hear a president's going to come on. Uh, Democratic Party has a lot of influence here in San Francisco. Uh, I think the last Republican we had for mayor was back in the 50s. So anybody who's going to be running for mayor in San Francisco generally is a Democrat or a member of uh, the Green Party or a progressive. The Republican Party here in San Francisco is pretty, pretty much irrelevant. So most of the races are usually decided in the primaries uh, beforehand, Democratic uh, primary, and whoever wins that one generally wins the uh, wins the general election. <laughs> and viewers do take note that you will rarely, and I'm telling you, I've never seen it before, where you see. Uh, fine police officers, San Francisco Police Department, out here uh, providing security for a uh, for a union hall. So this is exceptional, exceptional to me. Uh, I've been a resident of the city for 33 years, and seeing a police department out here protecting a union hall is indeed a rare sight. Because you can better believe that. If some union decided to go out on strike, the police would be the first people out there cracking heads. When I myself was actually arrested at a, at a union sponsored protest back in 1986 at Pier 80. There was a Dutch ship coming in that was unloading South African cargo. And the citizens of San Francisco actually voted to uh, outlaw any, any business dealings with anything from South Africa. So all of a sudden, this Dutch ship comes steaming in with a whole full of South African cargo, and we had organized a big demonstration in uh, conjunction with, with the uh, International Longshore Longshore Workers Union, and uh, they wanted us to come out and support them because they were prohibited to do so by uh, court injunction, which meant that they would be fined like an, an extreme amount of money every day. So. Us being the fools that we were, now we weren't fools, but us being the people that we were, we came out in support, 300 people showed up, and uh, 
we were successful in stopping any kind of cargo going in and out of San Francisco. But during the during the uh, demonstration, uh, they pulled one of my friends, Mike, and uh, he's a big guy, and he was able to uh, resist the police uh, because they were trying to stuff him in the back of a paddy wagon. And one of the police officers was uh, a woman was repeatedly trying to strike him on the back of the head with a billy club, which I knew that that might kill him. So I, I couldn't stop, I couldn't witness this, so I stepped up and pulled the billy club out of the police officer's hand and threw it to the ground. And things went on the demonstration, and uh, they were able to catch me like when I was, was separated from the crowd and arrested me and took me to jail. But uh, happy to note that uh, I was the charges had already been dropped before I was even booked. So I was released, uh, and we knew that we had to a just cause on our side or else we wouldn't have been out there in the first place. So, a little bit of my personal history. And that was a group called Campaign Against Apartheid. And uh, we, we actually were uh, the leading members of for divestment in South Africa. And if you've been following the news lately, uh, I'm sure you're aware of the tragedy that occurred there last week or the week before where 30, uh, 34 miners were killed by the South African police and uh, and then they tried to charge the demonstrators with murder but they did in fact drop the charges um, so uh, people in power here African National Congress uh, I was we were right about them back in 1986 that they are an authoritarian organization and they will use any means necessary in suppressing political dissent and uh, you know, it's funny that, you know, it's like you struggle for something and uh, you're working for something and these authoritarian groups try to come in and co-opt your, your organizing and, uh, and everybody thinks it's great when something happens, like the revolution or whatever, and then when these people finally get into power, they turn out to be the same Nazis that we were fighting against in the first place. Um, you know, Israel is one of, those, one of those examples as well, where there was worldwide support to uh, find find the Jews a homeland, and oh, I wasn't alive back then, so I really can't make any definitive statements. But uh, there was a movement, a Zionist movement, to uh, obtain a homeland for Israel. And you would think that after a group of people had been oppressed so uh, with such evil intent, uh, that they would actually turn around and maybe uh, cooperate and do something to make the world a better place. But generally, instead, they become just as big of Nazis as the people that they purported to, uh, to fight against. Oh, big, big throw himself. That's how you get Willie Brown, come on out. Yeah. Hey, Willie. Willie Brown. First July, to refuse right. orders to the immoral, illegal war in Iraq. Jeff Patterson, am I Support, support Bradley Manning, Willie. Support Bradley. Willie Brown, what's hey, your opinion the, about that? You know, Willie Brown's not interested in talking to you. Unless you got a six-figure campaign donation to make for one of his uh, ill-gotten charities or whatever. Willie, what do you think about Bradley? Right. Yeah, Willie Brown, one of the biggest crooks in San Francisco. Right. Willie Brown, hey, Wall Street. You understand I'm sure you know this, but it, if you need some more influence, you can always contact Willie. Willie Brown, right. oh, you're closing your windows. I just have to yell a little louder. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, vote free Bradley Mann. Goodbye, Mr. One Percent. Uh, Willie's only interested when you got campaign money to donate. Right? He doesn't want to hear from you any other time. So, that's that. And it was a great day when he was finally out of office. He did a lot of damage to the city of San Francisco. Some of it which is still visible. Uh, he was uh, uh, really uh, wholeheartedly supported, supported the construction of Live Work Lofts. Which did nothing to. Uh, we have a welcome to the drone party registrations. A little uh, housing problem here in San Francisco, and uh, these live workplaces uh, didn't provide any housing for anybody. And all you ended up doing was provide super expensive condominiums where you have to make at least two hundred thousand dollars a year to be able to afford to live in. So that's Willie Brown's legacy to the city of San Francisco. Those ugly, awful work lofts that were supposedly built to support web developers like myself, which uh, anybody knows that we're not able to afford to live in places like that. 
So, Slick Willie. Sort of Uh, I hear something. Let's go around to the front. A little action here. I'm getting a little bored. I got a lot of police on overtime today. Looks like we got about 20 or 30 police officers out here. Uh, generally, uh, you can best bet that uh, they wouldn't be out here unless the political cheese was here. Uh, otherwise, uh, police department would be only out here uh, harassing and arresting people uh, for being in a union and doing their damnedest to bust unions here in San Francisco and around the United States. So. Uh, they're definitely not here to protect the union hall or any of the union membership. Just the political cheese that has shown up to uh, listen to more of Obama's lies as he gets ready to speak at the Democratic National Convention. Um, if you're an insomniac or uh, you're trying to get some sleep, I would recommend turning on to the uh, speeches at the Democratic National Convention because they will help you uh, fall asleep through sheer boredom. Uh, the droning will go on and on. Uh, I happen to be watching a live stream at the Char in Charlotte of the Democratic National Convention, and man, you could hear President Clinton bullshitting Americans. Uh, that was one of the best pieces of bullshit I think that I, I ever had the uh, privilege of hearing. Uh, talking about how he was for the common man and for the poor around the world, and you know, let's be honest. Bill Clinton was a poverty pimp the entire time that he was president of the United States. Uh, he took away vast sums of money that were used in social welfare to support working mothers and children, especially children. Uh, he campaigned to make it hard for people to receive any kind of public benefits, saying that it was taxing the system. When you and I, well, when you and I know that if, if the top ten banks in the United States would just pay their taxes, Right? We're not asking them to pay more taxes, we're just asking them to pay their taxes. Well, then we wouldn't have any problem, we would have plenty of money, the, the budget would be balanced, and we would be able to pay for all the things that we enjoy as citizens, as, as Americans. So, uh, don't believe the hype. Uh, please don't support any candidates who support austerity measures, uh, because we know that's a bunch of bullshit. Uh, it's basically used as a tool for capitalists to take over the commons, public spaces like our schools and our uh, hospitals. Uh, we have one corporation called California Pacific Medical Corporation and they're engaged in trying to take over the health care here in the city of San Francisco. And uh, basically they believe that they could step into anybody in and around the Geary Street corridor of San Francisco in order to build their hospital which uh, and they won't they uh, supposedly were in agreement with uh, the city that uh, they would admit people without insurance. Um, that was one of the promises they made in the agreement that they, with the, they made with the city of San Francisco. Well, don't ever make a deal with a capitalist corporation like that. They're not going to follow up anything, especially when they know that you're a city, like a city or uh, a, a uh, organ, organ of the government, right? Because you know, the backhand deals, the backroom deals will be made, and lo and behold, so you'll find yourself injured one night and not able to get into the emergency room and being turned away because you don't have insurance, which is uh, it's a real issue for people here in, around the United States now because uh, uh, more and more people are finding themselves not covered by any kind of medical insurance at all. So this is a real important issue that people should be following.
Boy. I'm coming up here uh, up on the uh, almost a two hour mark here of my live stream. Uh, when it gets to two hours, I'll shut it down for a few seconds. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to shut it down now. So uh, just uh, wait a second here and I'll be right back up because uh, I have to archive this so we don't lose it. So just give me a second and I'll be right back. <laughs> 